Let's return to our example we were looking at last time. And just to remind you guys, what we're going to be doing today is working a lot of NFET examples and PFET examples. So all we're going to do today is look at different problems using these DC equations. But last time we were looking at this one. And I took the same circuit I started with at the last lecture. And I increased RD from 5K to 10K. And I proved that it is no longer in saturation because it was violating the boundary conditions. So the NFET had to be in the triode region. So once again, we write the equations. We get two equations, two unknowns. But because we have a square term, we're going to have a quadratic solution, <coughs> which means that when we solve, we get two answers. Mathematica gives us two answers. Which one is the right answer? Well, in order to determine this, we also need to see what Mathematica told us that VDS was. So in this case, VDS is 3.618 volts with that solution. And VDS is 1.362 with this solution. Now keep in mind, VGS minus VT is equal to 2 volts. So the, if I am in triode region, VDS has to be less than VGS minus VT or less than 2 volts for triode operation. So given this boundary condition, if it's in triode region, which of those is the correct answer? The second one is. It can't be that. It can't be 3.618. If it was that, transistor would be in saturation, but we've already proven it's not in saturation. Therefore, it's got to be this. So again, you have to always be checking those boundary conditions. And this narrows it down to the correct answer. Now, if you ever get a problem where you work it and both of the problems, both answers seem to match the boundary conditions, look for your mistake. <laughs> okay, You must have done something wrong. If you've done the problem correctly, you're only going to have one correct solution. Yeah? Would VDS, be negative? VDS will not be negative for an NFET. Okay? It will obviously it could be negative for a PFET, but not for an NFET. Because current must always flow from drain to source. And therefore, you always got to have a positive voltage drop. All right? Okay. Well, actually, I, sh I, should, I should put a, a caveat in there. You can certainly get a VDS that's negative for an NFET, but if you do that, then the drain and the source have swapped. So in other words, the drain is acting like the source, and the source is acting like the drain. But in the, I think you were saying last class, usually they're not like bipolar. Well, no. Well, I, it, I, what I said last time is a, we are assuming that the MOSFETs we're looking at are symmetrical devices. Whichever is the drain and which is the source is simply a matter of which is the more positive of the two. But does that reflect reality? Well, yeah. In other words, yes. You can actually, depending upon the process, if you have a process where the drain and the source are truly symmetrical, you absolutely can change the function of the drain and the source simply by flipping them around. Exactly. Although for specialized processes and devices, that's not true. Yeah? Well, if you get a negative, if you get a negative VDS, you better also get a negative ID. Yeah. All right. In other words, you can't have a positive ID and a negative VDS. But is it possible to work a problem in such a way that what you call the drain is more negative than the source? Yes. And if it's a symmetrical MOSFET, that means the source has become the drain, and the drain has become the source. So, but but normally I'm not going. Certainly on an exam, I'm not going to try to trick you that way. Okay. I, I just want to warn you guys. It is, it is challenging enough to learn how to work these problems and work them correctly without me trying to be clever on exams to, see, to show you guys how much smarter I am than you. Oh, yes. I'm so smart. I fooled you all. You should have realized that the drain and the source were reversed. No. Look, it, I, there, are, there are lots of plenty, plenty of normal problems I can give you guys. 
to show that you understand this stuff without me playing games and trying to flip the brain and the source around just to see, you know, if I can confuse you. Yeah. So is the sign allowed not to be a valid adopter? Because you have to check the better Yeah, exactly. It's it, you know, in other words, these are both positive. Uh, these are both positive voltages, all right? But you, obviously, you have to see which which one is less. Yeah. So you do have to check that boundary condition. All right. Okay. So, let's work another problem. And this one's a little bit different. In this one, I just gave you a problem, gave you the values, and said analyze it. In this one, I'm going to ask you to pick some values to give you a certain, to provide a certain set of operating conditions. In other words, here's where you are setting the bias yourself. All right. In this case, I'm giving, I've got a circuit here, and notice what I've got. I've got a MOSFET connected with a drain and a source resistor to 5 volts and minus 5 volts. The gate is grounded. And in this case, I want to choose RD and RS such that I get the two following conditions. That ID is 0.4 milliamps and VD is equal to 1 volt. So here's a problem where you're having to make a selection of component values in order to get a desired bias condition. So let's go through and let's figure out what's going on with the circuit and what those resistor values need to be. All right, so first question. First I need to determine what is the operating condition for that MOSFET. So I have three choices. It's off, it's in cutoff or it is in saturation, or it is in triode region. So, first question, is it off? Well, the answer is probably not off, and why is that? Because I want a non-zero drain current to be flowing through it. So it's not going to be off, but let's just check that. I mean, is it possible that somebody has given you a problem that can't be solved? Is it possible that somebody gave you a circuit where there's no values, R, D, and R, S, that'll make those bias conditions work? So it's always good to do a sanity check to make sure that your initial assumption makes sense. So the first question is, is the MOSFET really on? We, we, let's verify that, okay? Well, if we're going to determine if the MOSFET is on, let's first assume it's off. Let's see if there's a contradiction. So if the MOSFET's off, what must be true about the drain current? Drain current's got to be zero. And we note that the drain current is flowing through both resistors. There is no current flowing through the gate. The gate current is zero. What flows in must flow out. Basic KCL. So if ID is zero,
the voltage across that resistor must be equal to zero as well, right? So this voltage, Vs. Therefore, what would Vs be equal to? Minus 5 volts. If Vs is minus 5 volts, what is Vgs? What is the gate source voltage for this circuit, or for this transistor? Well, Vgs is equal to Vg minus Vs is equal to 0 minus negative 5 is equal to 5 volts. Vgs is 5 volts. Is that MOSFET off? No. VGS is clearly greater than the threshold voltage. No, I forgot to include. What are the parameters for this? Let me go ahead and give you those. It's Actually, in this case, VDS is 2 volts. Excuse me, I forgot to include that. K prime N is equal to 20 microamps per volt squared. And W over L is equal to 400 microns over 10 microns. And once again, I'm going to assume that lambda is equal to zero. I'm just going to assume that channel width modulation or channel length modulation is small enough for us to ignore. So given this, this still holds. 5 volts is greater than that value of VT. So I know it can't be off. It's got to be on. Once again, that's a sanity check. I am confirming that I was not given a problem that's not solvable. So VGS is greater than VT. It must be on. The channel must be formed. OK, what's my next step? If I know the MOSFET's on, what do I do now? Now I have to make some assumption about whether it's in. Yes? Well, I'm, I'm simply saying. I gave you a problem. I said, how do I know the problem is even solvable? That's what I'm checking. I'm checking to make sure that, I mean, for example, if the source were grounded and I gave you a problem where I said ID is 0.4 milliamps and VGS is equal to zero, I gave you a broken problem. The point of this is to double check that your problem actually has a solution. That's why we're doing this. You're right. ID is 400 microamps. That's given. So you're going to assume it's on. But what if I messed up the problem and I gave you a problem that can't be solved? That's, I'm not going to do that, but I'm saying I'm not going to do it. But, but how do you know somebody else doesn't give you a problem that can't be solved? You're doing the sanity check. You should never assume that something that's been given to you is going to work unless you double check it yourself. That's why we just did this. I mean, yes, you can trust me. I'm the most trustworthy professor at Vanderbilt University. Okay? <laughs> However, that doesn't mean that I can't make a mistake and that you, can, that you should not check to make sure that what you've been told makes sense. That's what you should always check. You don't want to waste time trying to work a problem that literally cannot be solved. Right? So that's why we did this. I just double checked this to make sure that this problem is solvable, that it makes sense. So yes. It is on, which we expected. The drain current is non-zero. So I've checked that. I've made sense. I've, I've made sure that that makes sense. All right? So now that I've done that, what next? Well, I know then I have to decide if that MOSFET is operating either in saturation or in triode. So let's go through. And if we look at this, some things are easy to figure out. All right? So, let's assume saturation. So, what does saturation require? Saturation requires that VDS is greater than or equal to VGS minus VT. Let's do a little mathematical trick to this. Let 
Notice how I have degraded or decomposed the VDS and the VGS using the subscript method. And why do I do this? Because the VS is now can be canceled on both sides of that equation. Therefore, if VD is greater than VG minus VT, that is an, basically an equivalent boundary condition for saturation. So I can write it this way, but I can also write it this way and just ignore the source voltage. Just ask myself, is the drain voltage greater than or equal to the gate voltage minus the threshold voltage? Yeah? Is it greater than or equal to or just I'm sorry, greater than or equal. Well, actually, you will see sometimes it's greater than or greater than or equal. When you're right at VGS equal, equal v, whenever you're, when you're right at VDS is equal to VGS minus VT, you're right on the boundary. And so sometimes you'll say, that's, is, is it triode or is it saturation? Depends upon how you want to define it. Okay? But yes, in this case, I'm just saying it's greater than or equal, but I could say it's also greater than. All right? But if it, if, it were, if it were exactly equal, I would be right on the boundary. And you could you know, flip a coin as to whether you wanted to call it saturation or triode, because it'd be the same equations. All right. So in this case, this is my equivalent boundary condition. We know we want VD equal 1 volt, right? That is the requirement of the problem for our bias condition, OK? Here's the question. Is 1 volt greater than 0 minus 2 volts? The gate is grounded. So VG is equal to 0. So is 1 volt greater than or equal to 0 minus 2 volts? The answer, of course, is yes. Therefore, is this transistor saturated? Yeah, it's saturated by inspection. I could just look at the drain. I can see the drain's more positive than the gate. This transistor is saturated by inspection. So I can just literally look at it and just tell that. If the drain's more positive than the gate, then I know it must be saturated. Because if it's more positive than the gate, then it's certainly more positive than the gate voltage minus the threshold voltage. So this is just kind of a little thing you can do by inspection and check. All right? So I know the transistor is saturated. So saturation is confirmed. So given this, let's now go through and let's do the rest of the calculations I'm going to need for this. So in this case, first, let's calculate RD. Well, that's actually easy because that's just Ohm's law. I've got 1 volt on the other side, 5 minus 1 divided by 0.4 milliamps. That's going to be equal to... or I should say 400 microamps. So 5 minus 1 divided by 400 microamps will be equal to 10 kilo ohms. So RD is easy. What about RS? What's that going to be? All right. Well, the problem with RS is I don't know the value of VS. So I need to write a couple of equations here. I do know that the current has to be the same flowing through both resistors. I know that must be true. So let's go through and let's write a couple of equations.
So I want to find RS. And so for the MOSFET itself, I know that ID, which is equal to 400 microamps, has to be equal to K prime N over 2 W over L times VGS minus VT squared. So I know the transistor's in saturation. I know the current's got to be 400 microamps. And so now I can write this and say, therefore, this must be equal to 10 times 10 to the minus 6 times 40 times 0 minus Vs minus 2 squared. So just plugged in all the values here. I get this equation, W over L is equal to 40. It's 400 microns over 10 microns, so that must be equal to 40. VT is 0 volts. VS is the unknown, the voltage I don't know. VT is 2 volts. And so I just plug in the numbers. So this is equal to 400 microamps. And what do you know? That's a solvable equation. However, what type of equation is it once again? It's quadratic. So either Vs is equal to 3 volt minus 3 volts or Vs is equal to minus 1 volt. Okay. Well, which of those makes sense? Vs is minus 3 or Vs equal minus 1? Well, let's think about this for a moment. In this case, Vgs, which is equal to Vg minus Vs must be equal to 3 volts. In this case, Vgs, which is equal to Vg minus Vs, must be equal to 1 volt. Does one of those answers make sense and one does not? Which one of these is the correct answer? Vs equal minus 3 or Vs equal minus 1? Minus 3. How do I know that? VGS has to be greater than the threshold voltage. So in this case, this is greater than VT. This is not greater than VT. Therefore, this is the correct solution. This is not. All right, so this is the only answer that makes sense. In this case, notice I'm checking the boundary condition for cutoff as opposed to the boundary condition for saturation. But in this, I get my answer. Vs must be equal to minus 3 volts. And therefore, for RD, RS, then I get that RS is equal to minus 3 minus negative 5 divided by 400 microamps, and that will be equal to 5 kiloohms. And there's my answer. So therefore, in order for this to be true, this must be equal to 10K, and this must be equal to 5K. And there's my solution. All right, questions about this? You've got to be methodical, and you're, more often than not, you're going to find that you're going to have a solution. You've got to check the boundary condition, and if you've got a quadratic answer or quadratic equation, mathematics is going to give you two solutions. You have to check them both, and then you've got to look at those boundary conditions, and that's going to tell you whether or not your, your assumption is correct and, or which of the two solutions is valid. Okay? Questions? I cannot overemphasize enough. You've got to work the homework problems. You've got to practice this. You're not going to do well on the exam next week if you have not worked homework number four 
and gone through these problems and figured this stuff out yourself in terms of how to go through that solution step by step. Having the equations in front of you will not help you one bit if you do not do, not do the homework. So I really want to emphasize that. Work the problems. Okay? Let us work another one. There are lots and lots of interesting problems I can work. And of course, as a professor, I would say that this is interesting, right? Yes, you may disagree. Yeah, question. Yes, exactly, because we wanted to know which of these answers made sense. We know it's in saturation because VD is greater than VG minus VT. So yeah, there's no point in checking that. It's got to be in saturation, okay, because the drain voltage is already given. So this is not a question. The only boundary condition I can check then is not the, the it's not the ohmic, uh, it's not, it's, pardon me, it's not the triode saturation boundary condition. That, that's, not the, that's not it. But I now have to check the other boundary condition. The other boundary condition is whether the transistor is even on. Is it in cutoff? So like I said, sometimes you need to check that boundary condition in order to find the right answer. Because otherwise, if I give you those two answers, how do you know which is right? You've got to check all the boundary conditions. But in this case, the triode, the triode saturation boundary condition does not come into play. So you have to look at the other one. Is it in cutoff? Yeah? If you have one of the solutions that gives you a, like a, a reasonable answer, doesn't that mean that one fails? Well, when you're saying, if you have two solutions and they both give you reasonable answers and they both meet the boundary conditions, what did you do wrong? Right. Okay, look at your answer. You, you made a mistake. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, do those both look reasonable at first glance? Yeah. Okay, except one of them doesn't work until you check the boundary condition. <laughs> okay, no, 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 you, you, just, you just can't look at the number and just, you just can't, I mean, like I said, guys, intuition, if you've ever taken circuits one from me, you've heard me say this before, intuition is your enemy when doing circuit analysis. Intuition is a little voice that sits on your shoulder and says, oh, that looks reasonable, that must be the right answer, and then laughs at you when you get points off. Because your intuition will betray you every time. What am I talking about here? I'm not talking about intuition. I'm not saying what looks right. I'm saying, well, let's check the boundary conditions. The math will not betray you, but your intuition will betray you every single time. I mean, even after all the years I've been doing this myself, my intuition will still betray me unless I check the answer to see if it makes sense. Okay? Everybody will always tell you, do the math. There's no other way to be certain except to do the math and to verify the answer. Because to do otherwise as an engineer is to invite disaster. I mean, where like things explode, multi-million dollar products or missions uh, get, get ruined, or people get injured or die. And then, believe me, that's not a pleasant thing to go through. Always, always check your answer. Double check it, triple check it. Sit in front of a group of peers who will critique your design and see if they can poke holes in it. You're going to go through that process through your entire career because that's the only way that you and the people you work with are going to be absolutely positive that the product or the device that you're going to put out there is going to be work and it's going to be safe. And to do otherwise is to beg disaster. All right. Question? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. No, no. Every once in a while, guys, I'm going to throw in a little bit of philosophy, engineering philosophy, right? I mean, because seriously, you're in this class as, you know, most of you electrical engineers, you're in this class to learn the fundamentals of what it means to be an engineer. It's not just me throwing stuff on the board. It's for me to talk about why we make the decisions and why we do the type of analysis we do. It's, life is not a bunch of homework problems where you get partial credit. Life is where it's right or it's wrong, and either you're hired or you're fired or you're sued. That's really, that's life, unfortunately. Not to scare you, but that's what everybody's life is like, okay? Everybody, no matter what your career you choose. You can't, you can't do anything without double, triple checking to make sure it looks good. It's going to work. Okay? All right, so enough gloom and doom. Let's get back to the problem here. Let's work ourselves another problem here. Actually, let me go ahead and let's do this on the top board. Let's do that one instead. All right, let's draw another one.
Okay, let's work this problem. So here's an interesting little circuit. I've got the gate connected to the drain terminal for this NFET. And I want to, once again, this is a kind of a design problem. Let's choose R to set ID equal 400 microamps. And while we're at it, also let's calculate what the value of VD is going to be. What will VD equal? So once again, this is a design problem. I'm given a constraint. ID must be 0.4 milliamps or 400 microamps. So in this case, let's look at this for a moment. VD and VG are clearly the same voltage. So by inspection, they must be the same. So if VD is equal to VG, therefore VD will be greater than VG minus VT. Once again, by inspection. If it's equal to VD, it must be greater than VG minus VT. Therefore, if this MOSFET is on, what do I know is going to be its operating condition? It's going to be saturated. OK, so let's throw some parameters on here. OK. Let's, for this problem, let's assume that K prime N is equal to 20 microamps per volt squared. W over L is equal to 100 microns over 10 microns. Again, let's assume VD, VT is equal to 2 volts for the threshold voltage. And again, we're going to assume that lambda is equal to 0. We're going to ignore channel length modulation just to make things easy. So first question, is it on? Will that MOSFET be on, regardless of the value of any resistor I pick? Will it be on? Well, let's assume it's off. Let's assume if it's off, then the drain current must be equal to zero. If the drain current is equal to zero, so once again, this is a sanity check. I gave you a design problem, but you're checking to make sure if the design problem even can be solved. So looking at this, is, does this make sense? If the, if the transistor is off and ID is equal to zero, what must be the voltage across that resistor, zero volts. Therefore, what would VD have to be equal to if the MOSFET were off? 10 volts. And therefore, what is VG? Is 10 volts. The source is grounded. And therefore, VGS is equal to 10 volts, which is quite clearly greater than VT. So is that MOSFET going to be on? Yeah, it's going to be on. It can't be off, because if it was off, then VGS would be greater than VT. So this is not possible, OK? Therefore, the MOSFET must be on. So once again, this was a sanity check. 
yes, I want the current drain current to be non-zero, but I want to make sure that it is possible for this circuit to even work at all. So let me point something out. What if this was 1.5 volts and I gave you that problem? Would that MOSFET be on? Would it be possible to get a drain current of 0.4 milliamps? And if that were true, then VD would be 1.5, and VGS would therefore be less than 2 volts. So it is possible for a person to give you a broken problem. And that's what I'm pointing out. If that were 1.5 volts, it doesn't matter. I, I could give you that on an exam, and you'd be sitting there and saying, how did Dr. Holman make this work? Oh, I fooled you all. That wasn't working. You were supposed to figure out that was a tricky problem. No, no, no. OK. I'm not going to give you broken or trick problems. But in this case, somebody may accidentally give you a broken circuit and they not realize it. And that means you have to check to make sure that that broken circuit, whether that circuit really can work and whether or not it's broken. So that's what we're doing here. This is sanity check. OK. So I know the MOSFET must be on. And since it's on, I also know it's got to be saturated. So now everything is simple. Simple, of course, being a relative term. But certainly, to an, a group of aspiring engineers, yes. I should at least maybe say straightforward. Everything is straightforward. All right. So, in this case, if it's saturated, then therefore ID, which once again is 400 microamps, is equal to K prime N over 2 times W over L times VGS minus VT squared. So I'm just using the saturation drain current equation. And if I plug in the numbers, this is equal to 100 times 10 to the minus 6 times VG minus 0 minus 2 squared. So VG is the unknown. VG and VD, of course, are the same voltage. So I need to solve. And if I solve, once again, because I've got that square term, it's quadratic equation. And what I will get is that VG is equal to 0 volts, or VG is equal to 4 volts. OK, I know the transistor is saturated, so, and I know it's on, so what's the boundary condition I need to check? Whether VGS is greater than VT. Well, VG is equal to 0. VGS will just be equal to zero volts. Is that on? No, it can't be on. This is less than VT. That's not possible. Over here, VG is four volts. Okay, therefore, VGS is equal to four volts, which is equal to VD, also equal to VG. And so therefore, VG is equal to 4 volts, is equal to VD. There's my voltage at the drain. And RD will be equal to, if I know that I've got 4 volts, then that'll be equal to 10 minus 4 divided by 0 0.4 milliamps. And that will be equal to 15 kilo ohms. And there's your answer. And incidentally, this configuration, there's a reason why I showed you guys this configuration. This configuration where the drain is connected to the gate is called a diode connected MOSFET.
It's when the drain is connected to the gate. Now the thing about a diode connected MOSFET, two interesting properties about it. Property number one is that if it if that transistor is on, it's got to be saturated. Because VD is equal to VG, if it's on, it's got to be saturation because of the boundary condition. So I know that must be true. The second thing is I can only make current flow one way through it. What do I mean by that? And this comes down to what was brought up a few minutes ago, I'm talking about flipping the drain and the source function of a MOSFET. So for example, if I do this, I just want to kind of point this out. If I have a MOSFET and current is flowing this direction through the MOSFET and say I've got five volts on this side and one volt on that side, then this becomes the drain and that becomes the source because one diffusion is more positive than the other. But I could take this same MOSFET, assuming once again it's symmetrical, I could take this same MOSFET and I could flip the voltages. I could make this 5 volts, make that 1 volt, and then current would flow in that direction. And this now becomes the drain, and this becomes the source. And the function of the drain and the source can flip. So as we said before, if, assuming that the MOSFET is symmetrical, what we call drain or source it's just a matter of which is more positive than the other. But if I have a diode connected MOSFET, let's think about this. So let's say that this is going to be equal to 5 volts and that's equal to 1 volt. Can current flow in that direction? Yes, absolutely, because VGS will be 4 volts. But what if I took this and I flipped it upside down? OK. Now, if I connected 5 volts and 1 volt to that circuit, now this end becomes the source. So all I've done is I've just taken the source and the drain and I've flipped them around in the circuit. So now the less positive one becomes the source side. Is current going to flow through that? No, because what's VGS equal to now? Zero. Yeah, VGS is equal to zero. And therefore, the current is zero. It's in cutoff. Current only flows in one direction through the MOSFET, just like a diode. So this configuration is called the diode-connected MOSFET, when you connect the gate to the drain. Even if you flip the drain and the source terminals around, current's not going to flow the other way. So you hear this configuration. It turns out this diode connected configuration, as we're going to see later on, is extremely common in modern circuit design. It's used in circuits called current mirrors. It's also used in bias circuits. And you're going to see a lot of it later on as we go in more advanced amplifier circuits. So this won't be the end of the, when you see this. But certainly, if you, if, you, if you do modern circuit design, you go into circuit design as a career, you're going to be using this configuration all the time. All right? Questions? All right, let's work another problem. There is no end of good problems that we can work as practice. So let's practice some more. Okay, here is another circuit.
Okay, now notice I've got two 10 mega ohm resistors connected here. Junction of the gates connected between those two. I've got a 6K and a 6K resistor. And in this case, let's assume that K prime N times W over L, which the book, of course, will call just KN, just the trans conductance parameter. It folds in the W over L ratio into it. That'll be equal to 1 milliamp per volt squared. VT is equal to 1 volt. And again, lambda is equal to 0. And in this case, I call this I1. This is ID. This is VG. This is VD. This is VS. So I've gone through and I've labeled the gate, the drain, and the source voltages for the transistor. And I want to find all of the voltages and currents in this circuit. Okay, now, once again, there's a reason why I showed you guys this circuit. This is a very common configuration that we're going to be using as we go through the semester to bias up a MOSFET transistor, and for that matter, also to bias a bipolar junction transistor. So what I'm doing is I'm using a voltage divider to set the gate voltage. So let's go through and do a couple of quick calculations here. First of all, what is that current going into the gate? Zero. DC current is zero. So for a MOSFET, we're always going to assume that current is zero. Now, for an actual MOSFET, that is not true. There's always going to be a very, very tiny amount of leakage current because there's no such thing as a perfect insulator. But whether or not that amount of current is going to be a, a, an issue for you is going to depend upon your design. But certainly for some designs, that non-zero current is something you may have to deal with. Yeah? Is that like nanoamps? Or oh, femtoamps it can be. It can be really, really small. So it may be small, but that doesn't mean it may not cause problems in precision designs. But we're not going to really focus on that. We're, for, we're always going to assume that current's equal to zero for a MOSFET. Make it easy. Take a more advanced course in like, if you ever take an op-amp course that I teach, we'll talk about the effect of non-zero currents in situations such as this. And it actually can be a problem. OK? But anyway, I know IG is equal to zero. So if IG is equal to zero, that's just a voltage divider. I can just go right through here. And I know that I'm going to have the same current, I1, flowing through both of those resistors. And so therefore, all I'm going to get is that Vg is equal to 10 mega ohm over 10 mega ohm times 10 mega ohm. It's just a voltage divider times 10. That'll be equal to 5 volts. So I know this is equal to 5 volts just by inspection. Well, not by inspection, but trivial calculation. So I found that. OK. Let's go through and let's do a few more calculations here. I1 is going to be equal to 10 divided by 20 mega ohms. And that's just going to be equal to 0.5 microamps. So there's my current I1 flowing through that voltage divider. That's easy. Now we have to look over at the transistor side. Once again, we have to determine what the operating condition of the transistor is. So first of all, is the transistor in cutoff? Well, is it in cutoff? If it is in cutoff, we note the drain current has to be flowing through both of those resistors. Flows into the drain, out the source by KCL. So if that's the case, if it is, then ID must be equal to zero. 
And if ID is equal to 0, what's the value of VS if ID is equal to 0? It's also got to be 0, right? If this is 0, I've got 0 volts across the 6K resistor. Therefore, VS must be 0 as well. And therefore, VGS is equal to 5 minus 0 is equal to 5 volts. Is that transistor in cutoff? No. It's a contradiction. Therefore, the transistor is on. Because VGS 5 volts is certainly greater than the threshold voltage. The threshold voltage is 1 volt. So greater than VT, it's got to be on. OK? So if it's on, then the question is, is it in saturation or is it in triode? What do we check first? Well, it's usually it makes more sense to check saturation, all right? Let's check saturation first, all right? So given this, let's assume saturation. So we're going to assume saturation next. And therefore, ID is equal to K prime N over 2 times W over L times VGS minus VT squared. Plugging in my parameters, that's going to be equal to 500 times 10 to the minus 6 times 5 minus Vs minus 1 squared. So I know Vg is 5 volts. What I don't know is what Vs is. OK. So that's my equation for ID. Well, I can't solve that. I need another equation in order to solve. So in this case, Vs I know must be equal to ID times 6,000. Because obviously if I have a non-zero current, then I'm going to have a voltage drop across that 6K resistor, and therefore Vs is equal to 6,000 times ID. And here I've got my two equations, my two unknowns. I can now solve. Mathematica is very nice for that. And I get ID is equal to 500 microamps, and VS is equal to 3 volts. Or I get ID is equal to 888.9 microamps, and VS is equal to 5.3 volts. So two equations, two unknowns, but a quadratic equation, so I get two solutions. Which of those answers makes sense? Three volts. Why doesn't this answer over here make sense? Because then VG, VGS is less than zero. Over here, VG minus VS, which is equal to VG, VGS, is going to be equal, or is going to be less than zero volts. It's going to be equal to minus 0.3 volts. Can't be that. Over here, VGS minus VT is 2 volts. And so in this case, VGS is greater than VT. That one's on. Yes? So, so are you testing it to make sure it's 0 volts because you can be on? Or? Yeah, I know it's on. I know it's got to be on. OK. So in that case, it's a test for Yeah, OK. 
Now, what, now, this only verifies, I've got two answers. This only verifies if these answers, which of these answers makes sense in terms of the quadratic solution. But here's the other question. Is it in saturation? I've check, I, I checked the cutoff boundary condition to see whether the answer made sense, whether or not the transistor was actually on. So this makes sense, but this does not complete my problem because what, have I, what other boundary condition have I not checked yet? The triode saturation boundary condition, okay? So now we have to check for saturation. I've got to make sure that my initial assumption of saturation makes sense. So all I've done at this point is I've simply selected out the only answer that makes sense, but now I've got to see if that makes sense compared to the triode saturation boundary condition. And so in this case, VD, in this case, let's check that. VD must be equal to 10 minus 6,000 times ID. And plugging in that value for ID, then what I get is this is equal to 7 volts. So VD is equal to 7 volts. Is this transistor saturated or not? Okay. Is VD greater than VG minus VT? Is 7 volts greater than 5 volts minus 1 volt? Yep, certainly is. So is this transistor actually saturated as well? Yes, it is saturated. So saturation is confirmed. So I know it's saturated too. Now what if that were not true? What if I found that I did not have VD greater than VG minus VT. What would I have to do next? I then have to go, I'd have to assume triode, use the triode drain current equation and repeat the process once again in order to figure out what the true final answer would be. So, but I checked it, saturation was confirmed, I'm done. All right, therefore, there's my answer. ID is 500 microamps, VS is equal to 300, 3 volts, VD is equal to 5 volts, VG, pardon me, pardon me, VD is equal to 7 volts, VG is equal to 5 volts. All right? So, as you guys can see, you've got the equations in front of you, but you've got to do this process yourself to get it straight in your mind what you have to check and in what order. That's where people get messed up. Have, the equations are, is not the issue. You've got to practice this because you've got to learn to check the boundary conditions to get an answer that makes sense. All right? Now, something I also want to point out to everybody. What if none of your answers make sense? What if none of your answers meet the boundary condition? What do you do next? Throw up your hands? What? Double check your math. Check your math. Where did you make the mistake? Ex yes. If you work the problem correctly, you're going to always have one solution that works. If none of your solutions work, you made a mistake. You made a mistake in your equations or in your calculations. So that's always the thing to do. Check to see where your error is. So if you have so two, possi two possibilities. If both answers make sense, you can't tell the difference between, they both seem to meet the boundary condition, or if none of them do, I guarantee you you've made a math error. You can't have a MOSFET being two different values all at once. You're going to have one valid answer. Okay? Questions? All right. NFETs. Let's work PFETs now. And as we're going to see here, guys, PFETs are just like NFETs in terms of the methodology, but the trickier part is we've got to work with negative voltages, and that's what sometimes makes PFETs a little more confusing for people. So let's go through and let's work a few examples. And once you have worked problems with NFETs and PFETs and can solve DC equations, then you'll be prepared for exam number one next week. So that's what you have to work these problems for.
So let's look at DC analysis of PFET circuits. And with a PFET, the source is always going to be more positive than the drain, and current flows from source to drain. So here's my PFET. Notice how it's drawn. Source on the top, the more positive terminal. Drain current will flow out of the drain. Positive drain current flows out of the drain. Here's my drain resistor connected between the drain and ground. I've got a gate voltage of 7 volts DC. So in this case, for a PFET, we note that VGS is going to be a negative voltage, not a positive voltage. VDS is a negative voltage. The threshold voltage will be negative. And therefore, the book, as I said, likes to flip around the subscripts. Instead of using VGS, it will use VSG. So VSG will be equal to 0. VSD will be greater than 0. And as I mentioned before, some textbooks don't do this. They just say, hey, it's negative, no problem, let's work the problem. But in this case, the authors of our textbook like to have positive values, and so they flip the subscripts around. Okay? So in this case, let's pull out some parameter values. Let's let K prime P equal to 10 microamps per volt squared. The width to length ratio is equal to 20. And VT is equal to negative 1 volts. And we're also going to assume, once again, that we're going to ignore the channel length modulation parameter. Assume it's 0. Keep our math easy. And in this case, I'm going to assume that RD is 10 kilo ohms. Okay, so this kind of looks similar. We did a problem like this before with an NFET. I just flipped it around. Now it's for a PFET. Single resistor connect from the drain, only now going down to ground. Okay, let's work this problem. I'm sorry? Yes, we're trying to find ID. We want to find out what the value of ID is and VD. Excuse me. Let's add that as well. Thank you. So let's find VD and ID. So this is exactly the same problem we did before for the NFET. We're going to find ID and VD. OK. So let's go through here and let's do some calculations. First of all, that's my source voltage. That's my gate voltage. And so in this case, once again, I'm using the technique in the book. So VSG is equal to 10 minus 7 is equal to 3 volts. Is this PFET going to be on? Well, yeah. Is VSG greater than the magnitude of the threshold voltage? Yes, it is. Therefore, I know the NPFET must be on. So the PFET's on. I know that must be true. Is it saturated or is it in triode? Well, typically your best guess first is to try saturation. Let's assume it's saturated. So let's assume saturation. And in that case, 
ID will be equal to, once again, K prime P over 2 times W over L times VSG minus the magnitude of VT squared. And once again, I'm using the book's equations. The book likes everything to be positive. And so in this case, this will be equal to 100 times 10 to the minus 6 times 3 minus 1 squared, and that will be equal to 400 microamps. So that's my drain current. And if that's my drain current, then VD is equal to ID times RD. which is equal to 10,000 times ID, and that will be equal to 4 volts. So now what do we do? We have to check the triode saturation boundary condition. Is VSD greater than or equal to VSG? minus the magnitude of VT. So it's 4 volts greater than VSG minus VT. So VSG is 3 volts minus the magnitude of VT is 2 volts. Is 4 volts greater than 2 volts? Yeah, it is. So 4 volts is greater than or equal to 2 volts? Yes. This transistor is saturated. So saturation is confirmed. All right, so here's my answer. ID is 400 microamps. VD is equal to 4 volts. Okay. Yes. Let's see. So V. I'm see. No, VSG is equal to ten minus seven is equal to three. Oh, pardon me. V. Oh, pardon me. VSD. Excuse me. I'm sorry. That's VD. VSD. Excuse me. Is equal to ten minus. Pardon me. Thank you very much. VSD is ten minus four. Thank you. Six volts. Excuse me. You're absolutely correct. VSD is 6 volts greater than or equal to 2 volts. Thank you. Okay. And see what I'm pointing out, guys? Always checking your work. Having a group of peers check your work. Okay. All right. That, that, that satellite would have exploded on the launch pad because I missed that writing down the correct number, except I had sharp-eyed colleagues in the room who pointed out that that should be 6, not 4. Okay. That's why you have design reviews. Yeah? Uh, so if say you're uh, VSD, yeah, it'd be greater than or it's right on the boundary condition. So when you when you're right on the boundary, the triode and the saturation current equations will give you the same answer. So yeah, you could say it's either in triode or in saturation, but typically when it's right on that border, typically people will say it's saturated. But you will get exactly the same answer no matter which equation you pick on that boundary. Okay, so great, everything was good. But what if RD is a different value? And once again, it's easy to change the operating condition. Now set RD equal to 100K, and let's solve it again. So I'm going to go through exactly the same things I did before. I'm first going to assume saturation. 
And if I assume saturation, nothing changes in that initial equation if I assume saturation. ID is still equal to 400 micrograms. The difference now is that VD is equal to 100,000 times ID is equal to 40 volts. Okay. Now I could check a boundary condition if I wanted to, but just looking at that answer, does that answer make any sense at all? Is it possible for an internal node voltage of that circuit to be greater than the power supply? Boy, if you could figure out how to do that, you'd be a rich person, wouldn't you? Okay, that would be violating some of those pesky laws of thermodynamics. No, this makes no sense at all. In fact, the drain is so positive it's greater than 10 volts. You know, it's, it's greater than VDD. It's not possible. Having said that, I will always get a couple of students on the exam who will turn in an answer just like that and never think twice about it. They're probably not in this room right now. Oh well, but I'm warning you. <laughs> if you get an answer that is outside of the range of the power supplies, that's, that circuit's connected between 10 volts and ground. Every voltage has to be in that range. It has to be between 10 and zero. So obviously this doesn't make any sense. What must therefore be the operating condition of this transistor? It's got to be in triode. And therefore, ID must be equal to K prime P times W over L times VSG minus VT magnitude times VSD minus VSD squared over 2, which will be equal to 200 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2 times 10 minus VD minus 10 minus VD squared over 2. So just going in, plugging in the values, and this is ID. Now this by itself, I won't get a solution out of that equation, so I also need the other equation. I also need that VD is equal to 100,000 times ID. And now what do I do? The magic of Mathematica. Type those equations in. If I solve, I'm going to get ID equals 61.6 microamps and VD equal to 6.16 volts. Or ID is equal to 97.4 microamps and VD is equal to 9.74 volts. Okay. Which of those answers makes sense? The first one? You're saying this one makes sense? That's the correct answer? Okay. Well, let's check that. Over here, what is, okay, VSD has to be greater than or equal to VSG minus VT. That is my saturation boundary condition. Okay? Or, okay, looking at this, well, what's VSD going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to 10 minus 6.16. Is that greater than or equal to VSG, which is equal to 7 minus 1? So that's equal to 6 volts. Is 10 minus 6.16 greater than or equal to 6? Well, well, let's think about this. this. Well, keep in mind, this, however, if we look at this, okay, actually, take that back. 10 minus 6.16, this will be equal to, hold on, VS is 10. I'm sorry, VSD, let's see, let's make sure I've got this correct here. Um, actually, guys, let's come back to this, okay? We're out of time. I didn't realize the clock here. We've got a class out here. 
let's come back to this and I'll straighten up my numbers next time and we'll fix this, okay? So let's look at this and I'll get the right number here because I wrote down the right number, wrong number here. Okay, all right guys, see you guys on Thursday and we'll finish up more PFET problems. So what did I just do wrong here? Hold on. Let's see. VSD must have, that, that's for saturation. That's, that's proof saturation. So in this case, what, what is VSD? Oh, pardon me, no. No, VSG is, oh, pardon me, that's three. Excuse me, that's three minus one. Excuse me, you're right. That's three minus one. That's going to be equal to two. Excuse me, thank you very much. I was looking at the wrong one. Okay, okay, there's the answer right there. Okay, we'll fix that. Okay, we'll, do, we'll come back to this next time.